Good evening, everybody. We're so glad to see you tonight. Uh, we're coming to you on a midweek uh, service uh, Bible study that we want to bring to you uh, this evening. And uh, just want you to, to open up your, your Bible if you would like to and, and follow along with us. But before I get into that, I want to quickly say how wonderful it was to see everybody uh, in our services on this past Sunday. We had a 9 a.m. service and 11 a.m. service. And uh, just wonderful. Just uh, had a good crowd in both services. And uh, just, it was just great to see everybody and great to uh, be able to be in, in fellowship and uh, worship together again. And so uh, we were just so delighted to see all of your faces. Uh, for those of you that were not able to come, uh, we uh, saw two people rededicate their lives to the Lord, and that's always a, a wonderful uh, moment, and uh, so we are so glad for that. But also, we uh, uh, just had a time of just worshiping the Lord together, and, and, and that's always a glorious thing. And so I want to invite you to come and join us this coming Sunday, uh, same time, 9 a.m. or 11 a.m., whichever service you would like to come to. And uh, we are uh, just thankful uh, for the blessings of the Lord on those services. We'll also have uh, last week's service on uh, online this week for, for the Sunday morning. If, for those that are not able to come and be a part of a, a service, you can watch us online. And uh, we'll have that available as we have in the past, both on Facebook and all, through the website on YouTube. And so you can uh, check those out. And I pray that they'll be a blessing to you. And uh, uh, if you would like to, there's there's one more option that we have that that's just up up to you if you would like to. Some people are not comfortable getting together with uh, in crowds yet, or uh, or with uh, other folks at this time, but would like to come and just join us on the parking lot. You can you can uh, par park out on the parking lot and listen on your radio at 101.7, uh, just uh, on that local, just very uh, close uh, range. Uh, you can hear the service live, and so that's just another option to you, and uh, it doesn't get you in the building, but it gets you on the property, and maybe that would be a, a blessing to you as well. But anyway, we just look forward to seeing all of you, and uh, uh, thank God for you, and I pray today that you'll be blessed uh, by the Word of God in this uh, service this evening, in this Bible study. I'm going to be turning uh, to Hosea chapter 6, verse number 3, if you'd like to follow along, but before I do, let us pray, and let us ask the Lord to bless uh, our our, uh, study of the word tonight. Amen. Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to come together in your uh, word tonight and just open it up and, and receive from you. God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts, that you'll minister to us, that you will just uh, direct your word by your Holy Spirit right into our ears of uh, every hearer and into our hearts, Lord, to uh, minister in our lives. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for it and just ask you to bless in a very special way. Let your anointing rest upon this study in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. This is the last Wednesday night of the month and we always uh, on in our normal routine would come together in a prayer meeting and uh, we would be able to come together and just uh, uh, join together in worshiping the Lord in that way. But we've always asked you every last Wednesday of the of the month to uh, join with us in prayer and fasting and just seeking the face of God. There's power that happens through uh, praying and calling on the name of the Lord and through fasting. And so I, I wanted to d just share a, a passage of scripture concerning prayer tonight found in the book of Hosea, chapter number six, verse three. And I'll read it to you from the New Living Translation, and it reads like this. Oh, that we might know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. He will respond to us as surely as the arrival of dawn or the coming of rains in early spring. Amen. Oh, that we might know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. He will respond to us as surely as the arrival of dawn or the coming of the rains in early spring. I want you to, to just uh, quickly notice something here in this passage that there's there's something about prayer that the prophet tells us uh, that uh, in that very first line when he says, oh, that we might know the Lord. That is a passion in prayer. There's There should be passion in our prayer. When we're praying, we shouldn't just go through a formula and through routines and just through uh, uh, something. You know, it's 
it's good to have plans and lists and all of that. I'm not knocking any of that. I use those uh, uh, quite faithfully. But what I'm, I'm talking about is, is having a passion in your prayer, knowing what you're calling to the Lord on. And here's what the Scripture says when he says that. He says, oh, that we might know the Lord. A knowledge of God doesn't just mean an understanding of who he is. There's a lot of people who, who believe God is out there and God is, is creator of all and God is all powerful and all of these things. But there's something far different uh, than just knowing about him and having an intimate relationship and intimate fellowship with him. And so that's what the prophet is talking about here. There has been some debate over whether this was a record of, of what Hosea was actually preaching or if this was a response of what the hearers were hearing and, and, and in turn saying, oh, that we might know the Lord. Either way, it's... It, Either way, there's an important message that's being declared here is that it is uh, something of great significance for us concerning a desire to know God more intimately. It's wonderful to uh, to meet him at salvation, but there's there's something that goes beyond that. We just continue to grow and, and get to know him. And so wh what Hosea told us that he says that, that when we, he's talking about all oh, that we might know him, he also has already talked about in chapter 4 about a lack of knowledge for the Lord. Here's what he said in chapter 4, verse 1. He says, Hear the word of the Lord, O, o people of Israel. The Lord has brought charges against you, saying, There is no faithfulness, no kindness, and no knowledge of God in your land. And because of that, he said in verse 2, You make vows and break them. You kill and steal and commit adultery. There is violence everywhere, one murder after another. And so what he's, he's just simply saying, because there's no faithfulness, no kindness, and no knowledge of the Lord, there is results of all of that, and it's great sin in the land. And so then he goes on in verse number 6, and he says, My people are being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Or in other words, they're being destroyed because they don't know me. And since he goes on and says, Since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priest. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will not or I will forget to bless your children. And, and so he's talking about a lack of intimacy with the Lord, a lack of, of knowing the Lord. And so if a lack of knowing the Lord has been the source of all of these evils that chapter four has talked about, then so the knowledge of him, if you think about it in comparison, having a knowledge and an intimacy with him brings forth mighty blessings. And so it's a wonderful thing to know that if we forsake the Lord, there's, there's uh, hardships and evil that comes our way. But on the flip side of that, the more we know him, the more you get to know him through your prayer life and through your Bible study and through attending church and through joining together with God's people, the more you will find the blessings of the Lord. And it is life, according to John chapter 17, verse three, life that God gives to us. And that scripture says, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now, what a powerful knowledge that when we get to know him, we we have blessing and life forevermore. Hallelujah. So he says, knowing him, uh, and, and he's talking about that we may know him. It's speaking of times of close intimacy, while the next point deals with a lifetime of intimacy. Notice this. He says, uh, not only that we may know him, but let us press on to know him. Let us press on to know him. In other words, let us pursue him in prayer. Let us pursue intimacy with God through prayer. And it, if we want to do that, it's, it's an act of will. It doesn't just happen. We have to uh, uh, make it up in our mind that we are going to get closer to the Lord. People say, just pray that I get closer to the Lord. That's a wonderful, uh, uh, honorable prayer to pray. But the fact is, is we have to have a willing spirit and a willing mind to say, I'm going to know him more. I'm going to learn to know him more. Paul even talked about that. I may know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. I want to know him. Amen. And so if you want to know him, you've got to commit in your heart to get to know him more and more. And so in other words, we can't only pray uh, the prayer of supplication on just as an as needed basis and expect to know God. There's nothing wrong with the prayer of supplication. It, it's something that God calls us to do. 
But it, uh, but we've got to understand that that cannot be the only type of prayer that we pray. In other words, only when we have a need that, that we call on the Lord. But God is calling us to get to know Him in, in other times of life. This pursuit of God on our part is an effort to know Him intimately and not an effect of needing Him in emergencies. It's something we've got to see that if we pursue Him through all different types of prayer, we'll find uh, a greater uh, aspect of His of knowledge of a knowledge for Him. There's many types of prayers. There's prayers of adoration, prayers of communication, prayers of communion, prayers of confession. Prayers of intercession, prayers of meditation, prayers of petition. There's praying in the spirit. There's prayers of submission, prayers of supplication, prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of travail and prayers of worship. Just like in a marriage relationship, uh, if it's not built, uh, if it's just built solely on one type of communication, then there'll be a, a lack of, of, a, of a growth of intimacy in that, in that marriage. And the same thing happens here. If all we do is call on God when we need him for, uh, to do something in our life, then, then we are uh, failing miserably at getting to know him in greater measures. One writer wrote it like this. He says, because our motto uh, should be, let us know and let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord, as, as Jose is saying, that's what our mo motto should be for daily living. Any day lived without a new discovery of an aspect of God's nature is a wasted day. If we do not know him better this week, more than we knew him last week, we are settling for sameness. And if we can't say that we have grown in knowing God, then we are backsliding into the future. In other words, we are finding ourselves with, uh, uh, as we go along more and more into our next day and our, our uh, future, we are knowing less of God uh, than what we should know because we should be growing in our knowledge of him. So we have a, should have a passion in our prayer life. We should have a pursuit in our prayer life. And finally, we should have potential in our prayer life. This is where he, he says this in the last part of our text. He will respond to us as surely as the arrival of dawn or the coming of the rains in early spring. There are no limitations to the prayers of the saints of God. If we will know God and continue in a progress to know him, then we can be assured that he will answer us when we pray, just as sure as we're confident that at sunrise, that sun is going to be popping up over, that, over the horizon. Or at the end of a, of a storm and the clouds begin to dissipate, then we will know that the sun is going to shine through that again. If we're not surprised by the sun rising every morning and setting every evening, or the rain falling in, in its due season and stopping when it's supposed to, if we're not surprised by that, then why should we as children of God be surprised by God hearing us and answering our prayers and drawing us closer to him. That's what Jose is, is simply getting to. He's just simply telling us, as sure as the dawning of a new day, we should know that God hears us and answers our prayer and that we'll move, he will move on our behalf. Hallelujah. That's so such a wonderful thing to know because if the sun rising doesn't surprise us, God hearing our prayers shouldn't uh, surprise us. If, if the moon coming up in the evening doesn't surprise us, then I... I want you to not be surprised when God pours out blessing on your life and you find yourself knowing him more and more intimate than you've ever known him in the past. First John chapter five, verse 14 says it like this. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. When our heart is right with God, we can be assured that we have an audience with God. When we are drawing close to God, God is drawing close to us. It's a powerful uh, uh, thing that happens when we pray and when we seek the Lord. So, so have passion in your prayer. Let, let your prayer life be full of passion for God. Let your prayer life be a, a daily pursuit for him. I'm going to know him more today than I knew him yesterday. I'm going to know him more tomorrow than I knew him today. I'm, I'm going to find him more and more. And uh, sometimes we don't see those, those uh, uh, progressions in our life until we step back and look back over a few months 
or a few years or or even sometimes in the hardships and over over several weeks and we'll look back and say oh god has drawn me closer to him so we have passion in our prayer we have pursuit in our prayer and we there is unlimited potential in our prayer so i encourage you saints be a prayer warrior be a prayer warrior be someone who seeks the face of god and desires to draw near to him and god will not overlook that he will bless you and he'll draw you close to him i want to be close to him don't you Amen. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us to know you more. God, that you are not just out here somewhere, Lord, bigger than life and, and, and out of reach of your children. The, your word says that you are just as near as your name. As we call on your name, you are there. And so, Lord, I pray that you would burden us and draw us and challenge us to be people of prayer in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory and the praise. Amen. 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 Thank you for watching. We want to encourage you if you need us, uh, text us, call us, do whatever you need to. We, we just uh, uh, pray that God blesses you tonight and gives you a wonderful evening. And we look forward to seeing you Sunday. And I, I pray that God has a, just has his hand on your life this week. Be blessed.